Your Excellencies, uh, dear distinguished participants and colleagues, dear students and friends, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, dear class, it's my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome you to the Hertie School here this morning on this very special occasion. Today we celebrate the achievements and the distinguished academic career of our colleague and friend, Klaus Offer. Perhaps it is telling that when we say to celebrate, what we actually mean is to say debate. Because today we'll have a debate about democracy, about the ever powerful promise of liberty and self-determination, about the dilemmas and challenges involved in maintaining and adapting democratic governance in and to modern societies, and about the fragile and difficulty, difficult transitions to democracy and the many setbacks and deviations involved. And as I looked at Klaus's career, I found that there's probably no better way to honor him than to argue with him about these issues, because he has persistently, and over many years, asked difficult questions. They not only address us as scholars, as academics, but also as citizens. It all started in 1965 when he co-authored what became one of the most influential books coming out of the vibrant student movement at that time, a book on the university and its role in democracy. In a time no less captivating and controversial than ours, he and his colleagues, Uta Gerhardt, who was attending, Ulrich Preuß, who was attending, and Jürgen Hagemermas attending, who wrote the introduction, they began the analysis of democracy in post-war Germany by challenging the role of the public university. As a result, they turned the university, and we can say that at the Hertie School, its outdated traditions and rituals, its inefficiency for democracy and citizenship into an impressive vehicle for democracy itself, for political change. Indeed, they helped create a public square at universities. They shaped many of the values and innovations that were to change Germany's political culture and institutions in the decades following. Of course, Klaus did not stop there. He went on to study capitalist societies and the welfare state. He proved to be one of the finest and ablest critics through his sociological research and constantly tested normative underpinnings of liberal democracy against the empirical reality of the modern industrial state. He studied and taught at many places throughout the world. As professor of sociology, he was part of the faculty at the University of Bielefeld. At that time, I think it was the largest sociology faculty in Europe. He was part of the faculty at Bremen and later at Humboldt University. And then, of course, he joined the Hertie School. But in between, he spent time at the Max Planck Institute, the Institute of for Advanced Study at Princeton, the New School in New York, and many, many other places. He has collaborated with some of the brightest minds we have in the social sciences, and some of them are here today. He worked with diverse scholars coming from very different traditions, and you only need to mention two names to see what kind of intellectual breadth Klaus managed to bridge and span over the years. He worked with Jürgen Habermas in Frankfurt and later with Niklas Luhmann in Bielefeld. Among his students, we find Wolfgang Strieck, who is attending today, Herbert Kitchell, uh, now at Duke, and Helmut Wiesenthal here at Humboldt. But perhaps most importantly, through Klaus's research and writings, we gain a better understanding of the social class contradictions in the modern welfare state. He sensitizes us to the dilemmas of liberal democracy in capitalist market economies. He stimulates us to think about new modes of governance and organizing welfare and social justice, indeed claiming social justice in the first place. When you read Klaus's books, you see that he never hides behind unnecessary abstraction, nor does he seek rescue in simply description or in describing facts without making a point. His thinking is informed, always informed, by theory, and facts. It has a normative foundation, to be sure, and I think this is ultimately what makes him such an innovative and very often provocative scholar, the thinker we celebrate today. Obviously, 
in his interest in democracy has not faded. For Klaus, there is no end of history, or more precisely, there is no end of questioning. Questioning democracy and its promises, the state and its institutions. And for us, our understanding as social scientists, as politicians, journalists, or activists, indeed as citizens. Just now, he's preparing a research project about the transformations that are taking hold in North Africa and the Middle East. His work has never been more relevant than it is today. The idea of democracy, of course, in high demand, is also very much contested. It is challenged. Democracy is contested because in the 21st century, governance is happening on many different levels simultaneously and with many actors involved, only a few of which are democratically legitimated or were put in place through some democratic process. Enormous transitions of governance challenge our world, ranging from global warming to global terror to the sovereign debt crisis, challenges that establish new modes of governance and require us to think about the meaning of freedom. At the same time, democracy is, as I said, in high demand. From North Africa and the Middle East to the public squares in Spain and the Occupy movement in Europe, a new form of social protest, we think, may be emerging that expresses a deep-seated discomfort with the way local and global decisions are being made by whom and for whom. So there is never a bad time to talk about democracy, but given these most recent developments, the debate we have today seems more urgent than ever. Therefore, the best we can do is to make this symposium, make this school, indeed make this public square one where we argue about democracy, civility, and citizenship in passionate ways. As some of you already know, the school has a passion for debates. It is a school for public policy, it's a school for governance, and in our master programs and in the PhD program that we will launch this fall, we encourage students to think beyond established notions and to challenge our faculty, including Klaus, constantly. And I'm very pleased to see uh, quite a number of our students here this morning. We aim to educate future leaders in public policy for civil society and in the business world. Right? Leaders that are able to pose difficult questions and help to think about alternative. And it is a rare opportunity to be able to welcome such an impressive group of participants as we have been able to gather here today. I'm eager to get you all started, but I'm also grateful that today's symposium will also be made available to a wider audience, so an audience more numerous than we are here uh, this morning. We are taping uh, this event, and it will be available on the Internet. I appreciate that Klaus will remain part of the school, part of our community, and that he will con continue to contribute to our school life. But now, I would really like to give him the opportunity to open this symposium in his honor. I wish all of us a memorable and eventful day, lively discussions, and perhaps some new and creative ideas. Be assured that we will provide you not only with food for thought, food for your brains, but we will also serve you in between the sessions coffee, and there will be uh, lunch served, I think it's at 12.30, before we then continue with the afternoon sessions. So let me welcome you again. I wish you a very productive day, and I would like to welcome Klaus to the podium. Thank you very much.